Hey guys, hey, it's John with Rublu Custom Rods, and uh, today I thought I would just go live um, and do a little bit of different things with some rod work or some work around rod building in case uh, you have not seen this type of stuff before, um, or if you're running into some of the same problems uh, that some other people have every now and then. So um, first of all, I just want to say welcome uh, for those of you that are here, uh, and what we have really uh, there's a couple of things. The first thing I'm, I'm going to work on here, um, this is, I did a video um, recently on how to kind of, you know, prepare the real seat, a fly seat like this that has uh, some openings um, with some five minute epoxy and just kind of prepare it to make sure you don't get any, um, any of your paste uh, when you attach it to your real seat from the pressure to go through there. The next thing I wanted to show you guys in this video um, was how to get kind of really the proper fit when you're taking your reel seat and you're attaching it to your handle like this full seven inch full uh, win full wells uh, uh, grip. Um, and I, I know it kind of goes without saying where you're like, oh, well, if, as long as the measured, um, you know, the outside diameter of your reel seat for the insert part, you know, fits the insert for the handle, you're good to go. Well, that's true. Um, but you know, not all handles are created equal and not all real seats are created equal. So sometimes, um, we run into issues like this, where I can't really put the real seat in there. And then if I kind of force it and push it in there without any prep, um, you can see what basically ends up happening right here is I get a gap between the ring, um, and the actual real seat, or excuse me, the actual bottom part of the cutout um, on the handle. So you can see I can kind of stick that burnishing tool down in there. Um, and so a way to get after that uh, is a couple things. The first thing I like to do is make sure that the surface on the real seat is prepared um, correctly. And so I just like to use a piece um, 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of turn it on that sand and just kind of go in there and make sure that you know, I don't have any glue or any finish um, from when I seal that top part, and I don't have any residual stuff on there, kind of getting in the way um, of the fit, if you will. So I'm just going to go in again, and I just kind of rotate it, 220 grit, and I just kind of move it with my fingers. And as you can see, I'm just basically taking that down and trying to make sure all of this where this glue is at either from the manufacturer or from me when I kind of created that seal on it I just want to make sure all that stuff is level so I just take a couple of minutes we'll sand that down a little bit make sure we got a good fit or a nice smooth edge and it's pretty good but I'll come back to that here in a second the next thing that I want to do um, is you can see right here how it's been cut out, right? Um, you know, when it was uh, machined out and stuff. So same thing. It, it takes a bit of time, but I like to take some 220 grit sandpaper and then I just start working the inside of this handle. And then you can see it starts taking off the, uh, the inside of that that EVA foam, if you will, pretty well, even though it's 220, you know, we're talking, it's pretty fine sandpaper. You can see here when I put it in, take a look, you can see all that stuff coming out of the handle. So what I like to do is just go in here and work on the inside part of this cutout and make sure that I'm making this wide enough to receive that real seat. And I also want to do the same thing on the inside to make sure that it will fit, that that cutout portion will fit far enough in there. So now if I just go ahead and slide that on there, I still have a bit of a gap there. So I just want to continue to go ahead and adjust that fit with the sandpaper. Again, just continuing to go through here. And I want to say thanks. I see some people that are joined. So Hey, welcome. Glad to see you guys here. I'm 
So I just keep working the inside of this cutout. And these are really good handles. If you guys have never used them, um, you know, I'm sure some of you guys have, uh, but if you've never used a wind grip um, for your fly rod builds uh, or any, any of your rod builds specifically, I, I, I really like um, the material. I, I just like the feel on the hand. It, it has kind of that tacky feel to it um, when it gets wet so it doesn't slip out of your hand. Um, and they're really easy to work with and, and pretty forgiving. Um, but again, sometimes, you know, even when you've done all of your homework and you've, you know, you've got the outside diameter measured for the real seat and the inside diameter of your cutout measured and you're like, oh, this will be a great perfect fit as soon as I pull it out of the box. Sometimes it's not that way, right? As much homework as we try to do, you know, when we're ordering stuff. And let me tell you, uh, I've been there. I, I know the deal. You're trying to put together a build you want to have. You got this, this rod in your mind that you want to build and you're excited to do it. And next thing you know, you're trying to find your components and you're trying to make sure all of your components, before you even can actually see them with your own eyes and put your hands on them, you know, you're trying to make sure your components are going to fit correctly. So that way you're not trying to have to return other products, um, you know, and make second and third order orders to try to get the right sized, um, you know, component that you're trying to work with, whether it's the right guide sizes that you're working with, whether it's an insert, um, you know, a real seat and an inserted handle, uh, you name it, an insert to a, you know, a graphite or a composite handle that's going to have an exposed insert, those could be challenging as well. So again, this is just a little bit of pre-work. And what I'm trying to do is use this 220 grit sandpaper and work the inside of this cutout with uh, and, and just make it a little bit wider. And the reason why I did is when I went to stick my uh, real seat in here, initially before I started sanding, it was kind of buckling and making it difficult to insert it. Now it's going in pretty easily, right? So the other thing you have to take in consideration <clears throat> when you're doing this uh, is, you know, where does the, it, where does your two part um, paste go, right? So, you know, ideally I have, you can see here, here's the blank, uh, the fly blank that I'm working on. I already have the butt in added. So once I get my arbors built on here and then I have the real seat on, once I slide, you know, I put this handle on and I slide down any paste that's on that handle, um, it'll take up and of course stick to the inside, but it'll build up inside this cutout and when I slide that over um, on the, the, the outside diameter portion of the reel, you know, that, that paste has to go somewhere. So that's something else you want to consider um, when you're preparing your stuff. And, and what I'm not saying is, oh, then you make it, you know, super wide. That, that, you know, that's not what I'm saying we want to do the insert. What I am saying is you want to make sure that you have enough paste on the blank to adhere the handle to the blank. But you also want to make sure there's still enough that will kind of stay inside of the cutout and coat over the top um, of the reel. But you don't want too much to where it seeps out in the cracks um, on the side. So I'm just going to continue to do this here. Keep sanding this down a little bit. All right. And then what I'm going to do is put my finger flat on the inside with the sandpaper and I'm just kind of turning it so I can also take down this flat part on the inside there. So, and I see I got a couple of th thumbs up or a couple of likes and I appreciate it. Thank you guys. And let me keep working here. So while I'm doing this, Hey, I, 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 you know, I, I put in the community tab uh, yesterday, you know, that I was going to go live and, you know, that I've only done it really three times since I've had the channel, which is a, which is a true statement. Um, so I'm not, um, you know, very well versed, if you will, when it comes to doing uh, YouTube live. Again, I've only done it three times, um, you know, at different times, uh, you know, in, in, during that journey, if you will. Um, but one of the things that I'm not sure how they work, and I, I don't know if you guys know how they work, um, I think I have an idea, but is the super chat piece. I know there's the super chat part 
um, which you can do on like live streams um, like we're doing right now. I know there's some super thanks um, that people can do if, you know, if they appreciate the material you're doing, but the super thanks I think are usually kind of in the shorts videos. So if, I guess what I'm trying to say is if I, I've never had a super chat, I don't know what a super chat is. Um, you know, I've never, I've never had to see one or respond to one. So if you guys know how to do a super chat, uh, if you could just leave a comment in the comments below, um, that'd be awesome. And I can kind of see how that works. Um, if not, that's fine. It's, it's totally fine and it's okay. All right. So I continued sending that down a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is go back and see what kind of fit we get with a handle. And you can see a lot better, you know, a lot better fit than where we're at when we first started. And where I, what I'm really talking about here is this ring. So the idea is I'm trying to get this ring to be all the way flush with this part of the handle and where I, I don't have that gap in there. That's, that's my objective, right? So uh, if you're just joining, when we first started, it was quite difficult and the gap was probably about maybe about that size, maybe a little smaller, but now you can see we're a lot further in there. So again, I'm gonna come back here to the handle. Again, previous video that I did where I showed how to prepare um, you know, your fly handle to make sure that it's not gonna leak when you put, um, you put your two-part uh, paste on there and it's not gonna get in all, all on top of your rosewood or your carbon insert. Um, so I'm just, all I'm doing is where I had some paste at, I'm just sanding that down a little bit. And I can even take, and it's got some rings on there to give it some, you know, some, some spots to grab onto, but I can take my sandpaper, work around the edge a little bit like that. All right, so we're good there. And again, I'm just gonna keep going on here a little bit. I think what I wanna do is I wanna go into the inside. And I just wanna, again, just, I have my finger on a piece of, it's kind of got this tacky rubber backing. Um, this is what it looks like on the roll. So this is the 220 sandpaper. You can see when I lay it out, it's got this kind of rubbery backing on it. Um, this is my really my go-to sandpaper that I like to use for a wide variety of things. But why I really like to use it here um, is because, you know, it's got that rubber thing. So when I'm using my finger and putting my finger behind it and sticking it inside the well like this, um, it, it, it doesn't hurt. You know, it's not hard against my finger, if you will, kind of like some of that thicker paper type stuff that, uh, that you can get your hands on and use. So I'm just turning that handle and trying to take down this inside piece. And then I just come back here to the edge and work the edge and just keep moving that around. And then just trying to make sure we get that good fit. And I just come back here take my real seat, slide it on, and I still got a little bit left to go. And the reason why this is important is you would much rather figure out that you don't have a proper fit when you're doing your dry fit than if you were already applying the real seat um, to the handle. So if I already had this, excuse me, to the fly rod. So if I already had this real seat on the fly rod, you can imagine that this process would be a bit more difficult uh, to accomplish and trying to get things sanded out. This part wouldn't be, but trying to work with that other part would definitely be a, a bit more difficult. And the other thing I don't want to do, or I want to be cautious of, is I don't want to sand it too far down to where I end up puncturing the sides, or I make it too thin, and then when I slide on the real seat, it actually ends up splitting the handle, or that part of the check, if you will. I don't want to do that. So things, it's, again, things I just need to be cognizant of um, in this process. So I'm just going around. I think I'm getting pretty close to where I want to be at. And if you're just joining, welcome. Glad to see you guys here. Thanks for joining us. Okay. So then we'll go back here. We'll try that fit one more time. And I got just a tiny bit more to go. 
And it's important to work both the sides and then of course the bottom, the part down here that's flat, you wanna to continue to, to flatten that out as much as possible. All right. And you just rotate, spinning that around, taking some of that off. That's pretty good. Just maybe a, a little bit more. I want to go down just a little bit more. I want it to have a good, good fit. And then, uh, hey, let me know what you guys think down in the comments block. Um, you know, let me know what you think of the video. If you guys are getting some value out of this, you think it's good material, um, or if you think it's not good material. Either way, please uh, leave a comment down below uh, and let me know what you guys think about this stuff. That way I know, you know, to make more videos like this or to not make more videos um, like this. All right, so we're slowly getting down here to the end, I think, where I want to be at. Yeah, just a little bit more. And then don't, sorry guys, I'm just taking a look at stuff. All right, I was trying to see where I can see any comments and stuff that you guys were doing, but I'm not able to see that, or maybe you guys haven't left a comment, so. All right, so we're working down this part here. And we're almost where we're at, and then, then I will do one more thing for you guys. All right. Okay, so now that's our reel seat and our handle, and we get a nice good fit. And so I think that sanding that out uh, has helped quite a bit, and that's gonna ensure that we have a good um, proper fit. And again, this is the seven and a half inch wind full wells grip. Love these things, whether it's for fly rod or if it's on a saltwater build on some of their uh, cylindrical salt water grips that they have. Uh, the way this stuff feels in the hand, um, and especially if your, your handle gets wet or your hand gets wet from dealing uh, with your fish and then trying to get back on the rod, um, it still maintains kind of that tacky feel to it. Oh, sweet. Hey, hey, Bruce, thanks for leaving a comment. I actually got to see the comment there. Awesome. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you guys something else. Uh, I know I've done a video on this in the past, um, but just bear with me while I kind of transition over. And what I would like to do here um, is just do, while I have everyone, if you will, live, uh, I wanted to give you guys a live version um, of this and maybe answer any questions that you guys may have. So here, um, here we're working with a Lama Gloss. Uh, certified pro. This is from a customer of mine. Um, this is a rod that uh, he actually received two rods um, and uh, from a friend of his that passed away. The rods were quite bad um, as you can see right here. Um, <laughs> that is not my work. That is how I received the rod. Um, and of course, you know, here's another example. You know, when we're looking here at the guide. You, I mean, you can see how this thing bends pretty bad, right? So, when we start talking <clears throat> about fly, or excuse me, uh, we start talking about rod repair. Um, I know I've done some videos on it. I'm not sure if you guys have all watched them. Uh, if you have, great, awesome, and thank you. If you have not, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of tips. You can see it live, uh, and if you get in the position uh, where you're asked to do a rod repair by you know, a, a, a friend or family member, uh, you, and you guys have never done it before, I want you to understand how super easy um, it is to do and uh, not to be scared away from. So a couple techniques here. 
Um, one technique you can see, if you have tag wraps, um, these, these are not tag wraps, it's just, it looks like it's a different color thread just because that finish came off. But a couple of ways that I can get after um, replacing <clears throat> guides or taking guides off is if, let's say I had a tag wrap, right? And so let's say it was a, a single or a double strand inlay, um, you know, I don't know, of gold thread um, with this maroon colored uh, nylon thread. One way to do it is just you use your razor blade, place it above, um, but, but you know, above but between the tag wrap and the end of the, the guide. So like here's the, the broken part of the double foot guide. So if there was a tag wrap here, I would place my razor blade somewhere just above that tag wrap, but between the bottom of that guide. And I would just rotate the rod, right? And then just enough to get down inside that, uh, that finish. And then when I warm it up and I go and cut it and pull it off, it'll come off a lot easier and it'll stay right on that ring. So you can see here, I, I kind of did some pre-work with that. One of the greatest things that you could use um, for doing this, this stuff um, is your alcohol torch. I mean, you can just get one like this. You get it at Mud Hole, Get Bit Outdoors. You can get them really anywhere. Um, they even have uh, the, um, the glass ones if you want a glass one. Um, but what I like to do is I got a little flame going on there. I know you guys, it's probably hard for you guys to see it. Yeah, there's some flame there. So all I'm doing is I'm probably, my flame's probably inch and a half, two inches away from this portion um, of the, that guide that's broken. And I'm just slight, slowly rotating it just to help soften it up a bit. And then I'll cap it and I'll come in with my razor blade. And what I want to do is I want to be on the foot of that guide, just like that. I want to be on the foot. If I'm not on the foot, I run that chance of getting down into my fishing rod material, right? Whether it's graphite, carbon, composite, whatever, which is not where I want to be at. I just want to be right here. Nice, good, sharp razor blade. And then I can kind of see where this is at. Yep. And slowly. Again, making sure I don't, you know, I don't get into that, that blank. It's not where I want to be at. And it should be really easy to, to kind of cut through once you add that heat to it. I'm taking a look, oh, that's a split foot. Okay. It's got a little split to it. It'll keep going there. All right. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna come back with a little bit more heat. And I'll do the same thing and I'll just warm it up a little bit more. And I'm just trying to soften that up. What I don't want to do is catch that finish on fire. Um, I know some people just catch the finish on fire and then try to rotate it, you know, try to like burn it off and, and peel it off which, you know, I, I mean, I guess you can do that. Um, but if you do that, you run the chance um, of ruining the blank with, from the heat. So I'm just coming in here. There we go. So I loosened it up. So I got that flame on there so I can pop that off and, and get that to break loose a little bit, right? And then that's exactly what I wanted. And then now I can just continue to work. And do not, you know, beat your guys' self up over this with your fingers or whatever. You can use, you know, something if you like. Sometimes I'll come back with a plastic burnishing tool. But just by softening that up and then getting a hold of a piece of this, you can see this is the thread. And then you can just peel that off. Yep, that's right. 
fiberglass way too flammable to just let it rip off, right? So, I'm just softening that up, coming in where I can. You can see, and if it starts to get too hard, don't break your fingernails on trying to remove it, right? Just get in there with a little bit more heat and then warm it right back up without setting it on fire. Um, and then, you know, rotating and peeling that stuff off. Then it's always cool if you can get it to do what I'm, what's happening right now, where you can just grab the string or the thread, if you will, and you can just kind of rotate it underneath there and pull that thread. A lot of times it'll pull that finish right up with it. Yeah, that, and it broke off, but it was good while it lasted. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm just gonna come back with my alcohol torch, get a little flame on there. And then I just wanna be careful, not too much heat. I'm just trying to help soften that up a little bit. I don't want it to catch on fire. I just want to soften up that, that, uh, that finish so I can easily pull it off. There you go. And you guys can see how that finish is starting to come off. You put a little bit of heat on there and it'll come right off. And this is this is a really important step, man. This is, this is what you guys, if you get in and, you know, you're, again, if you get into rod repair or someone asks you to repair a rod or you just decide to repair one of your own, you know, getting as much of this finish off as you possibly can um, without ruining the blank is instrumental. Because that's just going to help you ensure you get a nice, even uh, finish when you lay down the next one. Now I'm going to take my blade and I'm just going to come into the thread. I'm not going into that blank at all. I'm just trying to grab some of this thread where I can work with it and hopefully peel that stuff off, right? Again, we'll do that one more time right here. All right. There we go. Need it, Bruce, you need to get a manual wrapper, epoxy, and thread. Oh, wow. You know, I've, I've thought about getting, just because you posted that, Bruce, man, I've thought about getting, um, you know, a power wrapper and stuff. I don't know. I, I, you guys may have one. You guys maybe swear by them. But for some reason, I tend to just use and wrap my, uh, wrap all the rods that I do manually. A little bit more time consuming. Um, it would save me some time if I had a power wrapper, um, but I do like to, to do them each one individually, you know, by hand. So, all right, so I'm just again warming this up a little bit. And coming back in. Oh man, I was kind of hoping that piece of thread right there was going to work for us. There we go. There we go. And hopefully this piece will stay with us all the way down to the end. All right. All right, and you know, because we're talking about rod repair, all right, and I, I know I don't, I don't talk about business a lot, but let me, let me talk about business for a minute. Hey, listen, if, if you guys, hold on a second, rainbow sprinkles. How do you, okay, Ace, hey, rainbow sprinkles, you like that, that pro wrap too? And while, while Sprinkles is typing, hey, so here's the deal. One of the things I, I really tried to stay away, um, in, you know, as a business, right? I mean, this, this is my business, but, you know, as, as a, 
I, I tried to stay away from doing rod repair um, in business from a business perspective, I guess is a better way to say it. Um, and the, there was really no particular reason other than, I mean, it wasn't an important reason other than I, I didn't think, you know, that I, I wanted to mess around with it. Um, you know, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze kind of thing. Um, but I realized um, by talking with some people um, that there really isn't a lot of people. And again, I, I, I'm not trying to insult anybody here uh, in this next comment that I'm going to make, right? But what I've heard from a lot of people um, that own like tackle shops or a fly shop. Oh, I see it, Rainbow. It's not worth the cost for the upgrade. Got it. Thanks. Noted. I appreciate it. The, uh, one of the things I noticed by talking with, uh, you know, tackle shop owners and, and you know, rod, you know, rod uh, place like fly shops and stuff like that was, you know, they used to have, all these owners used to have, you know, a Rolodex of people that could do rod repair because people come in all the time um, asking, you know, hey, do you guys do rod repair? You know, I've got a fly rod or I got a couple rods that like, you know, like this one that, that you know, needs a guide replacement or something like that. And, uh, yep, see, I see that, I see that Bruce so he was, did a couple, right? So th that's my point is there's not a lot of people, um, to be honest with you, there's not a lot of people or a lot of the people that used to do rod repair are older people. Uh, and they either retired or just stopped doing it and, and don't dabble um, in rod repair. And so what I realized is there's a lot of shops um, that don't have anybody um, that they can call if a customer comes in asking for some rod repair to be done. Um, and so that's how I ended up getting into um, doing rod repair as part of my business. Uh, you know, you, you, the thing is, is you just kind of like what Bruce was saying. You can't, you can't charge people a lot of money for rod repair. Um, the, you know, the price has got to be fair, um, you know, for the little bit of work or maybe a lot of bit of work that someone's doing, you know, if you're doing a complete rod rebuild or something like that, which I have done, um, then, then that's different. But when you're just replacing a tip top, you know, or doing a guide or something like that, um, there's just, from a business perspective, there's not a lot of money in it. So people stayed away. The reason why I decided to do some rod repair or to offer services when it comes to rod repair was because there was a need in the community that I live in um, and no one there to help those people, you know, fix their rods. It's much easier to just fix a rod versus buying a used one. User, uh, I saw it. Use a ladder to remove the top and I saw, I missed the last part. I was trying to read it. I didn't see it, but I'll answer it later. Uh, once we're done with the video, but, um, yeah, so anyways, that's kind of how I got into, into rod repair and why I've been doing it. So, um, so here is the trick. So <clears throat> I'm going to use my torch a little bit, I think a little bit more here, and I'm just going to, I'm trying to take these where the feet were at. I want to take those off a little bit, a little bit more, and you can see back here where the thread was. They're really nice, clean, um, but I just want to take, hit this a little bit with some heat and then cap that and then come back over here and take this stuff off. So that way when I put the new guides on, that will lay over nicely on top of that uh, and finish well. The other part is I can, you can see where I've got this nice, clean, almost clean that part right there has got to come off but you can see where i had these these ends where the thread finished at you know i can go in here and make sure i got all that thread out of there and you can even keep those you can you can start your thread wrap if i point it right like that you can see that little ledge you can start your thread wrap right there and start wrapping over the guide uh, once you put your next feet in as long as the guide that you're putting on this would fit within that spot. But what I'm trying to tell you is you can leave that little bit of finish right here. I got to pop that part out, but you can leave that finish there, tie your thread into it. And then you just, your next coat of finish, you can lay over that. That, that is something that you can do, um, especially 
if you had a tag wrap that you were trying to keep where, where I was talking about at the beginning uh, when I first started this part of the video. So all I'm doing is coming in here and making sure I got that stuff out of there. Yeah, and that's it. So um, I do want to get some of this off. Just remember, always, any anytime you're taking a razor blade and you're getting next to your blank, always, always, always be careful. One little nick by accident uh, could cause you or, or your, your customer a lot of problems. Uh, yeah, hey Bruce, uh, yes, so agreed, um, agreed 100%, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity um, to show people, you know, the quality of the work that I can do, um, you know, that, that I offer by doing a rod repair, uh, and then also, you know, of course, I always give somebody my business card after, whether it's a tip, you know, whether it's just fixing a tip or doing a guide or a real seat that's come loose or something like that, I always give people uh, my business card and talk to them about, you know, if, you know, if they're ever interested in having a custom rod built, um, that, that I'm here, uh, here to help them. So, but all right. So, <clears throat> so that's really it. I'm going to take this down a little bit more, I think. Yeah, I think I'll take these down a little bit more. Um, I can even, you know, with, uh, if I wanted to take, uh, kind of like, let me grab one really quick. Um, so these are 3M. All right, man, go water the grass, brother. So, uh, so just regular 3M pad. Um, you know, you can come back with this, something like here. Of course, not going on top of your blank, but if you're just going to go on a part where you had some of that finish that you wanted to buff that out or like right here, uh, once I get the rest of this down, I could take this and help get that off a little bit that's not going to hurt the blank. You just understand, I don't want to scratch it, scratch the surface somewhere where there's not going to be thread or finish on it. So if I wanted to come in here and rough that up after I got the rest of this finish off and just kind of smooth that out and make sure I got a good, nice, clean, smooth fit, that is fine, right? You should be using a 3M pad anyways uh, when you do things like, uh, like a real seat stall, right? So if you're going to install, so if you're going to install your real seat, uh, on this fly rod, which I've already done, but you basically come in and you're roughing up your blank uh, and then wiping it off to make sure that you're taking off that sheen or that glossy surface of the blank to ensure that you get a good proper fit um, with your fit, uh, with your two part paste um, and the components that you're adhering to together. That's just one part of the rod um, that you want to make sure you're, you're, you're getting after, right? So, um, hey, Guys, I appreciate everyone uh, jumping in and, and hanging out. I hope uh, that this video was able to, to, to give you guys something to put in your toolkit, uh, you know, for, for, you know, whether it's, you know, doing it for yourself or, or trying to help somebody out, um, you know, when it comes to um, getting a good fit between, again, your Full Wells fly grip and your uh, inserted, uh, insert from the, from the uh, reel seat. Um, or if it's something like this when we're talking about getting into uh, to guide or rod repair. So I hope this video helps. Please feel free to share it with somebody that you think may have value out of it. Please let me know down in the comments block, guys, what you guys thought about it. Uh, about Hey, very welcome, uh, Tom. Very welcome. Uh, and uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I need to continue to do live videos. Again, this is only the fourth time I've done it since I've had the YouTube channel. Uh, and then uh, the only request I have is if, I have is uh, if you guys know how to use the super chat, could somebody use the super chat so I can see what it does um, on on my end? So uh, again, thanks for thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great night. Until next time, guys. Take care. Bye. You're welcome, Rainbow. You're welcome, Joey.